Hello, and thank you for joining us in this second Chalk Talk on Agile Data Integration. In this second Chalk Talk on Agile Data Integration, we're going to look at the first step in a data integration process related to a data warehouse and BI project. Let's assume that the initial data warehouse has been implemented and that the business is simply requesting a change to a BI report. This in turn requires an analyst to work closely with a developer in IT to add a new data source to say a data warehouse fact table. Now Agile Data Integration is ideally suited for data warehouse and BI projects because of this frequency of change. The, the business requests changes to BI reports, new data sources come into the picture that need to be uh, added. And so while the initial data warehouse project may be just the beginning, there's all these changes that evolve the data warehouse over time and new reports come into the picture and reports are changed. This process can take months. And why is that? Well, because as these requirements come in to IT, one, there's a backlog, and so they need to be prioritized. Second, the, um, the business and IT need to work together efficiently and effectively, and sometimes there's miscommunication and errors that occur, and so you need to go back and rework things. And then third, these changes can't necessarily be rolled out immediately. Sometimes they have to be rolled out per a schedule that's on a month or quarterly basis. And there's a number of other reasons. But using some of the techniques we're going to describe in these chalk talks, we can compress that time and get that down to weeks and maybe even days. So the first step, as we discuss in the, in the first chalk talk, is we need to find the data sources and targets. That is, typically an analyst working with a developer needs to identify the data sources and targets that are going to meet the business requirements. And so the question that the analyst might be asking is, well, which data sources contain the information I need for this report? The first step is the business is going to make the request, as we discussed already. The analyst will create a requirements definition document based on this request and work closely with the business going back and forth, getting clarification and getting a well-defined requirements document in place. And then in meantime, the analyst is working with an application developer to identify the tables and data sources that are going to meet the requirements. And this may require the, the developer to create a data dump that an analyst can look at or getting a DBA involved to grant access to this data source so that the analyst can preview the data, confirm that the, these are in fact the data sources that are going to meet the requirements. And so there's this iterative uh, process of going back and forth, back and forth before you, um, before the analyst that is, actually finds what they're looking for. And so uh, at the bottom here, you see the value stream um, ratio of non-value add to value added tasks. And invariably, there's wait time involved in this back and forth. Um, and wait time in terms of response, responses, wait time in terms of um, you know, prioritizing the work or prioritizing the request. So while the, each of these steps may only take a little bit of time, um, this wait time that's in between is non-value added activity. So if we can reduce these iterations, reduce some of the back and forth, that can help compress the time. Also consider that as you add even more data sources to the mix, the complexity can go up exponentially. And that is because if this is a data source coming from another application, you may need to get another application developer involved or subject matter expert. Um, well, that's, that's one reason. But uh, others is there's, you know, join conditions that need to be um, determined. There's 
data quality issues that need to be resolved. So how can we improve this? Well, first off, establish a good data governance framework that's going to ensure confidence, integrity, transparency, and security. And then second, provide the analyst a tool where they can find and preview the data on their own without necessarily having to get um, a developer or a DBA involved. Using the Informatica Analyst tool, an analyst can use a very intuitive user interface to find what they're looking for in terms of data and data sources by searching on business terms instead of technical terms. And this is because this is integrated in with the Power Center Metadata Management and Business Glossary. They can look at the term, the description, who owns it, what are the associated um, objects. That is, you know, this can be tables, reports, mappings, and so on. Um, also related terms how this is being, what, what rules are being applied to calculate it or to determine the value of, the, of this um, business term or entity. And then not only can you search and find what you're looking for that way, but you can drill down on the lineage of where the data is coming from. And so you can browse both upstream and downstream objects or artifacts and also find what you're looking for this way. Now remember I said data governance is a good foundation for Agile data integration. And what I mean by that is there's basically three pillars. The first pillar is creating a well-defined business glossary, managing the metadata associated with your, your objects and your data, and having that information transparency that's required so that you can understand the semantics, the context, where the data is coming from, how it's being used, who's using it. All this provides rich information that you need to understand the data that you're looking at and that you need to use in this, um, in this example here. The second pillar is related to data quality. How do you ensure that the data is complete, that it's correct, that it's consistent across uses? This requires consistent data quality rules being applied across projects, um, across the enterprise. It also requires um, some due diligence and management in terms of measuring those data elements and objects that are most important to you, whether it's customer information or product information or um, other types of data. And so you need to determine what has the greatest impact on the business and make sure you're measuring the data quality continuously and working to improve it over time. And then finally, you need to build up through master data management a single version or best version of the truth of the master data that once again is most important to the business, whether it's customers or products or suppliers or financial master data. And this master data is key to having the confidence in the information that you're using and looking at and basing decisions, basing operations on. And that is because the master data as you build out relationships and build out say a 360 degree view of your customer you need to have that confidence that this is in fact is the single version of truth all these things three pillars put together is what forms that foundation of a good data governance framework and that concludes our second chalk talk in the series on agile data integration thank you